uh, before I begin my presentation, I'm giving the audience an overall visual layout of where I'm going to be going. So this visual map is a really important idea. Start with this to give your audience context. Prezi is a new way to think about presentations and to help you with transition from PowerPoint to Prezi. Prezi has been redesigned to look more like PowerPoint. And I've got a screenshot over here. You can see those slides on the left. So it looks very much like a PowerPoint presentation when you're working with it. Uh, the stuff in the middle, you can see a lot of numbers and a lot of small lines. Maybe it might be too small to see. Uh, but that's the path. That is the path where Prezi moves from step to step. So now I'm giving you a visual overview on where I'm going, and I'm going to be returning to this idea over and over again. You always want to continually pull back to give your audience a visual context of where we are in the presentation and where we're going. So this is our first big point. Each template has a set of PowerPoint-like slides on the left. And we just talked about this at the very top. Look at that Edit Path button. We're going to be talking about that in a couple of minutes. Now, each one of these slides is actually a step along Prezi's path of motion. And you can see already that Prezi moves from point to point. So each slide is simply the stops along the way as Prezi moves from place to place. Now, these uh, templates come with their own steps. They're pre-formatted steps. Um, you can add to those. You can delete those. You can alter the path in any way you like. You can create your own path from scratch. Personally, once you're comfortable with Prezi, I think it's easier to start your own path from scratch. But we'll talk about that again, actually, in a couple of seconds. Because um, what, pe what Prezi is really good at is a brainstorming tool. Let's say you've got a presentation coming up. You're not really sure what you want to do. So you start typing your ideas up on the Prezi canvas, literally by just clicking and typing somewhere. And then after you reach sort of a critical mass of ideas, um, you're going to get ideas you want to put together. So you drag similar ideas together into the same frame. Now this presentation is using circles as their frames. You can also use brackets and rectangles. And then once you have uh, a bunch of ideas in each frame, then you start to organize by uh, delineating main points, sub points, so on and so on. And then after you've got all your stuff in place, after all the components are there, then you add your path. Um, so that's how I personally work with Prezi, um, and once you get comfortable enough with it, I would recommend personally um, using it in that way. Using that approach also makes it a great collaborative tool, as more than one of you can go up into the Prezi, add your ideas, drag your ideas around, and collaboratively work on this map of ideas. Think of it as a giant whiteboard. So now I'm zooming back out to tell the audience what we just covered and then giving them an overview of what we're covering next. So again, pulling out for context is a design I'm going to, to beat into your heads over and over again. Basic design principles, we've talked about this already, set similar ideas within the same frame. You want to keep those ideas on the same axis, meaning horizontal, um, and roughly the same size. You want to not be afraid of empty space, but use that empty space because that's going to help the audience differentiate between groups of ideas. And if you have sort of an outside the box concept or an aside or a joke, I don't know, um, then literally you can go outside the box. So use the outside of the frame for an aside of some sort that's not really in your main bit of material. Zooming out against to give the audience some context. Zooming and rotating is next. And this is what I just said. Um, zooming out at regular intervals gives the, uh, the viewer the big picture and keeps your slides in context visually. Think of the Prezi canvas as a map. So show people where they are on that map fairly often. So again, this is the map of the current section we're covering. Now you want to zoom in for your details, but try to avoid sudden changes in scale. If you notice what I just did, and I'll go back, this is actually in two steps. I went to zooming and rotating, then I went to my zoom in. Um, it just slows things down for your audience. It's really fun to zoom in and out and to rotate, um, but it's really, really easy for your audience to become disoriented, seasick, all that stuff. So if you're going to do a big zoom in, you might want to step it uh, into two or three bits. 
Now, using zooms and rotates um, is good for emphasis. I just did that. Um, it's useful for transitions between sets of ideas, but use them sparingly. And I can't emphasize this enough. I think I used them uh, maybe two or three times over the course of this presentation. Overusing them makes them less effective because people are just seeing the screen, zooming around and rotating all over the place. So use this stuff sparingly and use them for a reason. You want to avoid any unnecessary zooms. You don't want to pan large distances. And if you do, add steps in that pan, um, as we talked about before when we were talking about panning and zooming. Uh, you want to avoid sudden changes in scale. You want to limit rotates to 45 degrees. Because if you don't do these things, your audience is going to become really disoriented, um, literally, I guess not literally seasick, but literally nauseous. Um, and this is the single biggest complaint I've heard about Prezi. So I can't stress this enough. you got to chill. You've got to just be really calm when you're using zooms and pans and rotates. We'll talk about paths next. As I said before, you work with a pre-existing path in the template to add a new step in the path. There's that little edit path button at the top that I pointed out earlier. You click on that and then you choose the object you want to zoom in on. It might be text. It might be an object like a picture um, or a PDF. That step's going to show up at the end of the slide set. So after you've created the set step, you've then got to drag it up into the proper place in the slide order. If you're using that more free-form approach that I was talking about before, where you're um, giving yourself the room just to throw all your ideas up there and then organizing, it probably is best, or in my personal opinion, uh, it's best to use that clear all button at the very bottom of that uh, PowerPoint-like slide set. All the steps are going to disappear. All those PowerPoint-like slides will disappear. Once all your elements in place, just click, click, click click and create your path from scratch. Now right above that clear all command is a command called add current view. Um, by default a step in your path is going to automatically center in on whatever you selected whether it's a uh, picture or whether it's text and it's going to automatically set that zoom level. Um, to create a custom view like this one, and you'll notice nothing is, that picture may be centered there, but I pulled everything slightly to the side. Um, you set your canvas as the way you want it to appear, and then you click Add Current View. You don't have to use a path. Um, and this again is sort of an aside, um, sort of an outside of the box sort of thinking. So I've said it, I guess not outside the box so much as right on the box. Um, you don't have to use a path in your presentation. You can just set up your canvas as a map of ideas and then navigate on the fly by click and dragging where you want to go and using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. You can also deviate from what you're doing from a presentation that has a path um, you can deviate and go anywhere you want using uh, the dragging your screen around and zooming in and out. And then Prezi is going to pick up where you left off. So let's say I want to zoom out because I want to show you this button again. So I can show you that. I can zoom in. And then the next time I hit my forward arrow, it takes you to where I just from. So you can always deviate from the path anytime you want. So this, again, is the overview of what we just talked about. This is a good example of where you use Add Current View because it does not uh, it's not zoomed in on anything. You've got to set this view yourself by clicking Add Current View. We're moving over to our next main set of ideas, which are the tools that we'll be working with in Prezi. As I said before, templates come with preformatted frames. They also come with preformatted text boxes. So you just start typing inside the text box and you've got some basic formatting tools. You can see there in the screenshot on the right, um, it's like a real basic word processor. Um, you just type in and then click outside the box somewhere to accept that text. You can bold it, um, you can italicize it, and so on. To add a frame, now thus far we've been using the circle as our frame. This is an example of a bracket frame. Um, so to add a frame, um, you use the frame and arrows pull down at the very top of the screen. Um, and there's some limited choices here. You can draw a bracket, draw a circle, draw a rectangle. 
Um, you can also draw an invisible frame just to tell Prezi where you want it to zoom into. So that's how you add a frame. Here is a different kind of frame. This is the rectangle frame. Um, to create a new text box, click where you want it to go and start typing. It's literally that easy. Just click and type, then click somewhere outside your text box, and boom, um, you've got a text box that uh, is on your Prezi canvas. Now, after you've got that text box, and this is going to apply to pictures too, hover over it again and just select it. Just click it. Um, and these two tools are going to show up. This first tool, you'll see at the very top, has edit text on the left and delete on the right. Fairly self-evident. And then the lower bits allow you to move this around to add, uh, to make it closer to zoom in using the plus button to zoom out using the minus button. You've also, at the corners of your text box and or your picture, um, you'll see there on the right, I've got a picture of, I'm sure you've seen these before, it's a sizing box so you can adjust the size of your object and then when you hover over it, you get a little circle and that allows you to rotate. Um, so using this tool is the fun part because this is where you start organizing your ideas visually. You can re-edit your text, you make things bigger and smaller, you put them into place, you use rotates uh, judiciously, um, and this is kind of where the real work goes in, figuring out the best way to approach this set of ideas. Inserting media is next. There's an insert media button at the top. It's right next to the insert a frame. Um, you can insert all kinds of stuff. You can see the list um, there on the screenshot. Um, a few of these are images. You can add filters, borders, and effects, very much like an Instagram sort of approach where you can just make it look like a, a little more interesting than just a square with an image inside it. You can add YouTube videos just by putting in the URL. I'll play this for a couple of seconds. You make presentations to share ideas, showcase work, or even to persuade your audience to do something. So that's an example of a YouTube video. You can add PDFs. This is just an account request form. Um, and there's other things you can add now. I'm not going to overload you with all the possibilities, but there are quite a few. Um, what I want to talk about now is a very cool feature of Prezi. Um, Prezify is their verb, not mine, and you can use it to Prezify an existing PowerPoint presentation. Uh, what Prezi does is strips out all the design stuff that PowerPoint put in there, and it just leaves you with blocks of text and pictures. Um, then it allows you to choose a layout among several options and ask you if you want to use a path or not. Um, and all those aspects, the path, the order you put the stuff in, um, the size and placement of each of those blocks of text and those pictures are customizable. So it's a very, very cool feature in Prezi. It allows you to Prezify an existing PowerPoint presentation. And we'll end by showing an example of that. Here's the overall very, very short Prezi presentation. Here's our first slide. I allow myself to use a little rotate here. Here's our second slide. And we'll zoom in a little bit to what we're talking about. Um, this is a very cool feature. Um, once you use the share option at the top of the screen, um, it allows other people to work with your Prezi, either just to view it um, or to edit it. Um, whichever you choose. So you can set the privacy level yourself. Um, so put it at hidden is what I would suggest you do. Um, and then invite people using that add people box at the bottom. Just use their emails. Um, and this is how you collaborate. You add people using the email box at the bottom. You allow them to edit. And then you are able to collaborate on a Prezi together. Another interesting option here on the share menu is the present remotely command. Uh, you can copy the link. You see the link down there with the word copy link just to the right of it. Uh, email that out to the invitees of your presentation. It gives you a maximum audience of 30. And then when you're done with your presentation, the link is going to go away 10 minutes after you finish. So it's a temporary link that is just useful on the fly right before you're about to give a presentation. And then finally, the other options here on the share menu, you can share via Facebook, which is pretty self-explanatory. You can download it as a PDF 
um, where each step in the path just becomes a page in your PDF. So in a sense, you're just PowerPointizing uh, what was once a Prezi. Um, and then another cool feature of Prezi um, is that you can download it as a portable Prezi. This gives you a zip file. Um, and when you unzip that zip file, you've got a standalone offline presentation that you do not need a browser or an internet connection for. You unzip it, you click Prezi.exe, and you're good to go. You just navigate it using your left and right arrow buttons. And that is my presentation on working with Prezi.